Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today for another webinar in our Market Access and International Approvals webinar series. My name is Crystal and I am part of the Certification Approvals Technical Staff here at VISTA Compliance Laboratories. Today I'll be presenting to you the Certification and Approval Regulations as well as the technical requirements for electrical equipment, electronics, and wireless products and device approvals in the Asian Pacific. Vista Laboratories is an EMC and RF compliance test lab and product certification body, and we are experts in global regulatory approvals for radio frequency devices. So today we'll be going over the requirements for radio frequency and telecommunications approval in the Asian Pacific. In this webinar, we will provide an overview of the major topics necessary to understand to get your radio devices on the right track for authorization and distribution in the Asian Pacific. If you have any questions on the topic presented today or any other immediate questions regarding compliance, testing, and product certification, you can reach us at info at vista-compliance.com. Without further ado, let's begin the presentation. Here are the Asian Pacific countries we will be going over today. We are going to go over Japan, Australia, Indonesia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Vietnam, and New Zealand. It is a lot, but we will go over how to get approvals in all these countries. First up is Japan. The Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications, also known as MIC, is the governmental authority which oversees market authorization for radio products granted based on the Japanese radio law. Radio law covers all products which utilize the radio spectrum and operates under 3 terahertz. Telecommunications Bureau covers wireless communications technologies specifically. Three forms of certification. Technical Regulations Conformity Certification. This is when testing and certification will be conducted for each radio equipment. Certification of Construction Type. This is when testing and certification is conducted on one sample unit for each type of radio equipment for approval of the construction design. Self-confirmation of technical regulations conformity. This SDOC, or self-declaration, is when you simply perform testing without certification to confirm that the equipment meets the current technical requirements. These are all part of RF approval, which should not be confused with VCCI, an EMC regulator in Japan. Here are the MIC regulated products. There are two main categories, specified radio equipment where certification is mandatory and special specified radio equipment where certification is optional. Under specified radio equipment, there are unlicensed stations consisting of 20 classes such as wireless LAN, Bluetooth, cordless cell phones, low power security systems, UWB radar, short range devices. Licensed stations, 38 classes, can include CDMA, WCDMA, LTE, cellular devices, cellular phones, mobile earth stations, land mobile stations, other licensed stations, 101 classes, base stations, wireless access systems. For special radio equipment, there's 15 classes of specified radio equipment designed as special equipment. They are special because these equipment really cause interference or other disturbances that would severely jam the operation of other radio stations. Special specified wireless equipment is the main class of equipment accepted for self-confirmation in the technical standard conformity self-confirmation system. A manufacturer or an importer conducts verification and then the certification itself only when it is deemed that the construction type of the special specified radio equipment conforms to the technical regulations and that any and all specified radio equipment based on said construction design is ensured to conform to said construction design. Here are the certification requirements. Testing can be tested locally or in country. One to two samples. Lead time depends on the complexity of the device. Documentation, block diagrams, schematics, antenna specification sheet for RF approval, data rate, it contains each modification method and all data rates that product has, test report, external photos, drawings, pictures of product, six dimensions, size, length, width, and height must be demonstrated by taking pictures next to a ruler. 
Picture of each PCB, both sides, if PCB is shielded, both of shielded and unshielded views. PCB layout. User manual, draft version, series products manual can be accepted. ISO 9001, Certificate of Applicant and Assembly Factories. ISO 9001 certificates are acceptable and an on-site inspection is generally not required. The lead time can be as fast as one to two weeks or up to four to six weeks, depending on the product's complexity. Family model grouping. Family model grouping is allowed. The models in the family grouping must be based on the same design. All product variants must all be based on the same design and may differ only in options and versions. Modular approvals, meaning certifications of radio modules are permitted. Host equipment, which contains one or more certified radio modules, can be labeled with the certification numbers of the certified radio modules. A label can be placed on the host device, which indicates the presence of one or more certified radio modules in the host device and includes the certification numbers of the certified radio modules. Permissive changes means that products, hardware, and or software are modified in a way that affects or may affect conformity with the technical requirements. The product may be subjected to additional testing. The additional test reports and all other supporting documentation are submitted with a modification application. May use the same certificate number. Must be filed with the same certification body as the original application. Recommended to ask the certification body on the intended permissive changes. After a permissive change, it is possible for the certified equipment to be allowed to continue using the same certification number. Regardless, each permissive change needs to be submitted to the certification body for review. If it is possible to keep using the same certification number, the certification body will then issue a new certificate for the same certification number, but with a revised date of issue. Please note that the certification number contains the identification number of the certification body which certified the device in question. Because of this, it is not possible to use any certification body for Japan in case permissive changes need to be reviewed. Permissive changes must always be filed at the certification body which issued the original cert certificate. It is highly recommended to ask the certification body for their opinion on a case-by-case -case basis in case of intended permissive changes. The certification body can then provide their recommendation of what test can, needs to be done, what documentation needs to be updated, and in the same certification number can be reused. Now taking a look at labeling. Labels must be affixed in a prominent location that is easily visible to the user. For batch certifications, the RCB must apply the labels in a prominent location after issuing certification. For type certification, the applicant generally handles printing and affixing the certification mark. In this case, the applicant should submit certification mark specifications when applying for a certification. Certification mark spe specifications will include the label and mark dimensions method of fixing, and the label's location. For products which contain more than one type of radio device, it's possible to obtain a single consolidated type certification number to avoid placing multiple real numbers on the label. Both batch certification and type certification share the same certification mark with the symbol R in a black box and the certification number. The size of the mark must be three millimeters or more in diameter, as well as made of durable materials that cannot be easily damaged. The color of the mark may be chosen by the applicant so it doesn't clash with the branding of the product, but it must remain easily identifiable. The first three digits of the certification number indicates the registered certification body, RCB number 216. The remaining digits are determined by the certification as identification numbers for the equipment. E-labeling is allowed as an alternative to the physical marking of a conformity mark. It's a way to place a mark by electronic or magnetic means to the specified radio equipment based on the certified construction type, allowing it to immediately display the mark on the display or screen of the specified radio equipment. If the mark is attached to the specified 
radio equipment via an e-label, the process of displaying the mark by the specific operations or procedures are to be in a clarifying attachment document such as the user's manual. Requirement for physical marking are also applied to e-labeling. E-labeling is a great option for smaller electronics and for software that is constantly updating. A certificate example is shown here. Certification information are publicly available and searchable on the MIC online database. Certificates do not expire and renewals are not required. Although, new certifications are required for products that have been changed. The certificate shows information such as product specification, certificate number, the certificate holder's name, address, contact information, and the certification date. It also includes the technical specifications that have been approved for this product. MIC carries out market surveillance every year. So in terms of surveillance actions, the MIC will take to ensure product compliance. MIC will purchase merchandise from the market and examine it for conformity with the technical regulations and contact the supplier to correct any non-compliance issues found. They will investigate further what happened. When equipment which violates the technical regulations is detected, MIC orders the supplier to correct it. After an investigation, MIC will publish notices in case where non-compliance have been found. Common examples of non-compliances are undocumented changes in certified equipment, wrong test methods applied, unauthorized test reports were used to obtain a certification number, model name of certified equipment was changed, and this change in model name was not presented to the certification body. Penalties. Refusal to submit radio equipment to or provide reports to MIC fines up to 300,000 yen. Unauthorized use of mark up to one year imprisonment fines up to a million yen. Nonconformance interference up to one year imprisonment fines up to one million yen. Unauthorized changes to equipment fines up to 500,000 yen. Some of the common penalties and offenses are, have been listed here. It includes unauthorized use of the Kateki mark nonconformity of the device, or unauthorized changes to the equipment. When equipment which violates the technical regulations is detected, MIC orders the supplier to correct it. After an investigation, MIC will publish notices in cases where non-compliance have been found. So that covers Japan's MIC. Now we are going into Australia's ACMA. So the regulatory body for wireless telecommunications, broadcasting, media, and internet is the Australian Communications and Media Authority for conformity certification system. Declaration of conformity is needed. Supplier must maintain all compliance records, including device description, test report for each applicable standard and DOC, and must be registered as an ACMA supplier. Regulated products in Australia get separated into three categories, Level 1, 2, and 3, an increase in risk of device. Level 1 mainly just digital products. Short-range devices are low risk under ACMA RCM, and holding a test report is not mandatory. The radio device must still comply, hence the best way to ensure radio compliance is to, to hold a valid test report. Level 2 is medium risk device, things like laptop or computers. And level 3 is high risk device, and they're potentially used in close proximity to the body, like smartwatches. Now let's take a look at the certification requirements for medium and high risk products. Testing is needed if no existing test reports available. Can be tested locally or in country. One or two samples needed. Lead time depends on complexity. Documentation. Product technical specs. Test report. User menu. Application forms. Local representative is required. And the approval time will be one to two weeks. So family grouping is also allowed in Australia. If products have the same electrical characteristics appear on the same test reports, then they can be grouped into one family.
for permissive change. This means that product hardware or software are modified in a way that affects or may affect conformity with the technical requirements. If new testing and reports are required, then the declaration will require revision. SDOC.if for ended use device. Although de demonstration of compliance with radio aspect through radio modules reports can be used. Here is the label for the regulatory compliance mark RCM. The product marking regulatory compliance mark must be registered with ACMA to use, and it can be also recognized in the New Zealand. For radio communications and EMC products, where the level of conformity is 1, 2, or 3, you will need to use the RCM. The requirements. Legible and visible, at least 3 millimeters in height. Permanent, e-labeling is allowed. Package and documentation labeling is allowed. Required for all product risk categories. Compliance audits can be triggered from random selection in the database or if they receive written complaints or safety concern. So try to avoid mislabeling and try to stay in compliance with the ACMA. Can we use a administrator as units? So one unit equals 210 Australian dollar. For companies, you may be fined up to 315,000 Australian dollar or two years imprisonment for individuals for any non-compliance found. So that covers Australia SEMA. Now we will go into Indonesia SDPPI. So starting with a brief overview, what is the SDPPI, previously known as DGPD for the Directorate General of Post and Telecommunications, the SDPPI or Directorate General of Resources and Equipment of Post and Information and technology, STPPI, radios, radio frequencies and the standardization of radio and telecom equipment in Indonesia. The acronym doesn't really fit, because acronym is from the Indonesian translation of that. STPPI regulates the radio frequency spectrum up to 3000 gigahertz and allocates that this spectrum based on international allocations for radio frequencies. SDPPI also supports the development of technology and efficient use of resources through standardization, management, and supervision of the telecommunications sector. Infantry type approval testing is required as per Indonesia's own national standards, known as the Directorate General's Decree or the SNI, Indonesian National Standard. Depending on the requirements, most of the standards are based on international standards such as IEC and ISO and ITSE. Even if an equipment has already received an international recognized certification of approval, the equipment must still be certified to comply with the Indonesia technical standards. All posts and telecommunication equipment, including radio modules and Host devices capable of radio communications are subject to Indonesian SDPPI approval, and it is mandatory for every wireless or telecom device that's produced, assembled, used, or traded within the Indonesian territory to comply with the technical requirements based on the application's regulation. A certificate of type approval is required for radio equipment and other regulated devices to be sold in or imported to Indonesia. Every telecommunication equipment traded, made, assembled, imported, and or in Indonesian territory are required to comply with technical regulations and based on licenses in line with the prevailing laws and legislation. Here is a non-exhaustive list of regulated products and product categories for information technology equipment, internet and communication technology, as well as telecommunications and networking. It covers all the wireless devices and RF technologies, such as wireless LAN, RFID, Bluetooth, remote keyless entry systems, radar, low power devices with output power less than 10 milliwatts, short range devices, routers, modems, GPRS, GMSM, WCDMA, GSM, 
voiceover, IP, smartwatches, headsets, earphones, laptops, tablets, computers, access points, video game consoles, base transceiver stations, and other technologies. SDPPI regulates radio frequency RF devices contained in electronic electrical products that are capable of emitting radio frequency energy by radiation, conduction, or other means. These products have the potential to cause interference to radio services operating in the radio frequency up to 3000 gigahertz. Devices operating below these frequency requires type approval by SDPPI. Exemptions are government regulated devices such as equipment used for the purpose of state security, defense, special official services, and government agencies. Here's an overview of the requirements. Testing can be tested locally or in country. Two samples, lead time depends on complexity. Documentation, product specification, internal and external photos, user manual, English and Indonesian, test software, operational procedures, test reports if available, block diagram, circuit diagram, schematics, certification forms, local representative letter, Letter of authorization from applicant or approval holder. Label. Local representative required. Lead time, six to nine weeks. Certificate valid for three years. Needs to be recertified. For the label, the applicant needs to provide two pictures of each label. One full scale image for the label, QR code and warning signs attached on packaging or on the device and another showing the zoomed out image, which includes the full picture of the packaging showing the label, as well as the label location. Manufacturers or importers who want to sell their products in Indonesian market must include their label in the Indonesian language. Keep in mind that six to nine weeks is a long time, so keep that in mind if this is a country you're considering. New certificates are required every three years if the product will continue to be imported. There are multiple manufacturers. A uh, separate certificate is required for each manufacturer. For cer certification of the same product that originates from that are manufactured in different countries, even if it's the same product with the same equipment name, same brand name, same model name, and same specifications, if they are coming from different country origins, then each will still require to have its own separate certificate. Manufacturer. Different origin countries require new certificate. Module. Must be imported and sold as module. Can't be part of another device. Any end product or device with a radio module inside is considered a host device. Host devices with a radio module will still be required to have its own approval at the host level. Issuing SDPPI certification. Most labs only perform testing. SDPPI normally only issues certifications granted at the system or host level. Certification is valid for each type of or model number of equipment. Product or model series certificate or type of rules is not accepted. Family model grouping. Family model grouping is not allowed. Certificates are issued on a per model basis. Changes of certificate application. Change in name of certificate holder. Original SDPPI certificate. A name change deed signed by a notary. Change of certificate holder's address. Original SDPPI certificate. A name change deed signed by a notary. Transfer of certificates. Original SDPPI certificate. Deed of certificate transfer agreement signed by a notary. Technical changes are allowed, but if there is any certificate change on the RF spec, then a new certification is required. Product changes. When a device is modified, a new approval and certificate is required. New testing and reports are required. Changes to radio frequency characteristics require new certification. Additional or reduction of RF features. New testing and reports are required. Changes such as the following are permitted. Changes of certificate holder, changes of certificate holder's information, change of address. 
Certification labels are required for every single equipment marketed in Indonesia. After the successful approval of a product by the authority, the manufacturer is obligated to mark the product with associated SDPPI certification label. The certificate holder shall attach the label mark on every certified equipment. For the purpose of the monitoring, the label shall also be attached on the equipment box. The label is a mark that the equipment complies with the technical regulations in Indonesia and the purpose is intended to guarantee for consumers and monitoring by the Directorate General of Post and Telecommunications in the market. The SDPPI certification label is a pure word mark and the label must promptly display the following two main components of information. The label, which consists of the certificate number, SDPPI, your issuance, unique PLG, or customer ID number, and the QR code, and a warning label in color must be affixed to the packaging and or product. The QR code must be attached to each package of the device and must be in color. Please see example shown here. The warning statement states, no changes can be made to this device that causes physical or a electromagnetic interference to the surrounding environment. The manufacturer is responsible to produce this label and affix it onto the equipment. The label must be prominently displayed in the components shown here. The size of the label depends on the size of the equipment, but it must be visible and prominent. In situations where the equipment does not permit affixing the label due to restrictions on its placement, the label may be placed in the user manual and product packaging. The markings and letterings can be of any size or color. The warning sign is not required for SRD, such as Bluetooth, low power devices, RFID, and NFC. Surveillance. Surveillance activities are performed at random. All devices found without valid certifications will be sanctioned and fined. Companies may be restricted from applying for approval. Importation is not permitted if no certification exists. Equipment can't be imported, marketed, or sold once the certificate is expired. Penalties and sanctions. Various penalties and fines depending on which regulations were broken. Restrictions, suspensions, revocations. Blacklisted for two years and cannot submit applications for new certifications. Suspensions due to technical or non-technical conformity. Revocations can occur if the product is no longer produced. The Ongoing compliance of the product will be surveyed and performed by SDPPI and its spectrum management and law enforcement sector, as well as regional trade offices and national law enforcement. Surveillance activities are performed at random, and if a device is found without a valid certification, there will be sanctions and other fines. Importation is not permitted if no certification exists after the certificate has expired. The equipment will not be able to be imported, marketed, or sold in Indonesia. There are various penalties and restrictions for different regulation violations. For example, an importer may be blacklisted by SDPPI, cannot submit applications for a new cert certification for two years. Certificates may be suspended due to technical or non-technical conformity or non-compliance, such as not following up within specific time periods or misuse of conformity label or certification. Certification revocation can occur if the product question is no longer produced or if insufficient corrective actions are taken or not taken within a specified time period. So that covers Indonesia's SDPPI. Now we will move on to Singapore's IMDA. So the regulatory body for wireless telecommunications, broadcasting media and internet in Singapore is Info Communications Media Development Authority, also known as IMDA. In terms of registration in telecom equipment, there is three ways. 
general registration, declaration certified, and evaluated by a certification body. Simplified registration may use a declaration of conformity, proof through a test report that equipment is conforming to IMDA's technical specification, and supply declaration of conformity, conformity assessment on the equipment as per IMDA's technical specification specifications, approval of IMDA for sale or use of radio communications equipment. So here's a list of the regulated product categories. Land mobile radio, mobile base station, wireless broadband access, IoT, TV white space devices, ultra wideband, dedicated short range communications in ITS, short range devices, mobile terminals, broadband access equipment, low power devices, digital broadcasting system. And please note that in Singapore, there are no radio communication products that can be exempted from IMDA approval. Now let's take a look at the requirements for IMDA. For testing, it can be tested locally or in country, up to two samples. Lead time depends on complexity. Documentation, SCOC form, certificate issued by IMDA recognized certification body, sales brochure with technical data, test reports, and features supported. The lead time will usually take two to four weeks, and a local representative is required. The certification valids for five years. Family model grouping is not allowed in Singapore. The certificates are issued on a per model basis. There are two classes of modification, class 1, where reassessment is not required, and class 2, where reassessment is required. For class 1, supplier may continue to sell class 1 modified equipment without the need to notify MDA of the changes. Reassessment by IMDA is not required. So, we just change in closer size, shape, color, changing driver, software, changing PCB layout without schematic changes, changing SAR that does not affect compliance. And for class 2, reassessment required, change in TX antenna, changing output power or radiate field strings, additional of net, new network, interface card, or changing existing interface card. All other changes not categorized as a class 1 modification does require the reassessment. So here is the product label. Statement of compliance with IMDA standards. Can't affix it on the instruction manual or packaging. E-labeling allowed with instruction to locate the e-label. The requirements. Label size 17 mm by 9 mm. Prior approval is necessary to use a different size. Advertisement for non-registered or labeled equipment must state for export only. IMDA has a checking mechanism in the form of post-market surveillance, which is being carried out by IMDA's enforcement team in response to public complaints. IMDA will carry out samples checking of registration on a weekly basis. For cases where there are doubtful or inaccurate registrations, IMDA will clarify technical specifications. Compulsory certification schemes, tech approval required, before it can be used or offered for sale in Hong Kong. Regulated products, compulsory certification, citizen van radio equipment, land mobile radio equipment, aeronautical mobile radio equipment, fixed link equipment, ISM equipment, voluntary certification, cordless telephones, DECT equipment, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, Radio Communications, DTS or FHSS, 27 MHz apparatus, 409 MHz short-range portable radio, pagers, 3G, LTE, mobile phones, RFID in 865 to 868 MHz or 920 to 925 MHz. Requirements Testing can be tested locally or in country. Two samples. Lead time is two to three weeks, but can vary depending on the complexity of the device. 
Documentation, circuit diagrams with values and tolerance of components, technical and operating manual with detailed equipment descriptions, operations, and technical parameters, photos showing circuit layout, internal and external photos from all sides, block diagram, test reports, application forms, local representative not required, lead time is three to six weeks depending on product, no ex expiration date. Family model grouping. Family model grouping is not permitted. Certificates are issued on a per model basis. Modifications. Supporting documents should be submitted to show that the radio equipment to be modified continues to comply with the required technical performance. Cosmetic changes, such as changing color, is not considered as a modification. Prior approval from the certification body is required for any alteration and model, number, brand name, or any other particulars information for the equipment. No electrical or mechanical changes shall be made to the equipment without prior approval from the certification body. Labeling. Labeling is voluntary. Although labeling is voluntary, manufacturers, suppliers, and dealers are encouraged to affix labels prescribed by the CA to their certified equipment for consumer guidance. Requirements. ZZZZ, Certification Body Code Assigned by OFCA, YY, Your Issuance, XXXXX, Serial Number of Certificate Issued During That Calendar Year, Label May Be Printed on the Package, in Materials, and or User Manuals If It Is Not Practical to Affix on the Outside Service of the Equipment. Surveillance, Offenses. Use of unauthorized frequencies, unauthorized sales, dealing of radio transmitters, unauthorized modification of radio transmitters, level 5 fine, imprisonment for 2 years, causing interference, level 5 fine, imprisonment for 6 months, other penalties, up to 1 million Hong Kong dollars, depending on type of non-compliance and how many times it has occurred. So that covers Hong Kong's AFCA. Now we will go to Malaysia Serum. In Malaysia, you may have heard of Serum. It is the Standard and Industrial Research Institute of Malaysia, governed by MCMC, and the certificate is issued by CMCS, Communications and Multimedia Certification Section. They oversee compliance approvals, type approvals, and special approvals for communications equipment, which is to be used exclusively by the applicant. Compliance approvals, also known as type approvals, may be granted to a specific model of communications equipment that has been certified to meet the specified standards, technical specifications, technical checklist, and or technical declaration. Special approval is only applicable to the following categories as stated in Communications and Multimedia Act 1998, Technical Standard Regulations 2000. First is personal or company. Second is exhibition. Third is demo, trial, or market survey. Fourth is research and development, R&D. And last is training. Please note that special approval applications is not for local sales. The Communications and Multimedia Act of 1998 defines communications equipment as network facilities and customer equipment used for communications. Any equipment used to provide network services such as public switch telephony, Optical, fiber, cellular, mobile, terrestrial, satellite, and broadcasting is considered a network facility. Customer equipment includes all types of wireless devices and equipment used on the customer side of the network services, fixed line or cellular phones, fax machines, modems, wireless routers, and gateways, optical transfer receivers, satellite receivers, mobile radios or walkie-talkies, smart and digital televisions, and any equipment or devices that use wireless technologies such as laptops, tablets, cameras, watches, drones, baby monitors, CCTV, and others. Here are some regulated products. Product categories. Frequencies below 3000 MHz. Frequencies above 3000 MHz. Bluetooth, cellular, voice and data. LMR, digital trunking. 
Shadow Wave, Radar, Global Positioning Systems, Alarm Systems, and House Paging. Equipment is exempt if it is for personal or company's own use. For trials, market surveys, or demonstrations, exhibition purposes without network connections, research and development, R&D, training. Examples, fixed line or cellular phones, fax machines, modems, wireless routers and gateways, optical trans receivers, satellite receivers, mobile, radio or walkie-talkies, smart and digital televisions, and any equipment or device using wireless technologies like Bluetooth. Here are some general overviews of the requirements. Testing must be done in country, up to four samples. Documentation, equipment information and equipment technical specifications, principal and manufacturer information, declaration of trademark and brand name, authentication letter, external and internal photos, minimum size 5R, which equals 5 inches by 7 inches or 127 millimeters by 178 millimeters. User's manual, test report, administrative documents. Local representative is required. Lead time is three to six weeks, but that may depend on the product's complexity. And the certificate is valid for one to five years. Family model grouping is not allowed. Approvals are issued on a per model basis. This means each model is subject to an application under its own certificate. Modifications. Paralleled by comparison, applications will allow for approved models that have not changed communications characteristics and performance, safety, EMC, SAR, and radiation hazards, if applicable. Superficial cosmetic changes, like a change in color, is not considered a modification because it does not affect performance of the device, but any changes on their radio characteristics warrants a new certification. Changes or modifications must go through a new submission and obtain a new certification. For example, if there is a significant change on the physical appearance and RF specifications, then we need to make a new certification. But if the changes is not significant, for example, no new radio frequency feature added or removed, such as only changing the certificate holder or updating the address, then this can be revised without needing a new certificate. The certificate is valid indefinitely. But a new certificate must be obtained maximum five years if the product continues to be imported. Changes to the product will require applying for a new certification. The certificate holder is responsible to ensure following requirements are met before submission of COC renewal application. First, COC has been granted full approval. Second, continued compliance to the current requirements. Third, no valid complaints, feedback, and findings from the market surveillance activities. Fourth, maximum validity period for renewal is five years from the current year. Additionally, the applicant can renew the COC one month before the expiry date. The new date starts from the expiry date. The importation of MCMC is very straightforward. Unless it's under specific conditions, the import permit applies to all equipment capable of being used for telecommunications in the frequency band up to 420 terahertz, as well as their motherboards and apparatus, or equipment to be attached or connected to public networks. IT networking equipment utilizing tariff codes assigned by Serum. The usage of approved permit is for one model per application per shipment, valid for three months from the date of approval and not extendable. When import the product, certificate holder shall ensure the quality of imported equipment do not exceed the quantity declared in the approved permit. Self-labeling mark is eligible for all certificate holders. According to the MCMC requirements, the certificate holder must use the certification mark in its entirety and must include the following. The logo design, the word MCMC, and unique SLP ID, i.e. common ID, CID, or certificate holder ID, HID. Unique identification number that provides traceability for each equipment bearing certification mark. The identification number can be of form of either IMEI number or equipment serial number. For MCMC labeling requirements, the unaided eye must be able to read and see the certification mark 
The size of the circulation mark may be reduced or increased proportionally as needed, but it must not be less than 8 millimeters in height or by 8 millimeters in width. So a certificate holder may use any of the optional colors, black, reverse, white, or gray, for their certification mark, as long as visibility is ensured by contrast with the background color or by marking in relief. For example, molding or engraving or embossing. The font must be visible where the unique ID for circuit holder or common ID for a principal manufacturer is used. Electronic labeling must be used on equipment that A is supported by firmware or an operating system, OS, that can be displayed, stored, and retrieved from the equipment, and B has a built-in display or can be operated in conjunction with a device that has an electronic display screen. Surveillance Framework Serum carries out routine to market sampling and surveillance at least once a year. Sample certified equipment for the purpose of verifying complaints, offenses, non-compliance with technical standards, falsifying information, unauthorized use of the spectrum, promising public safety, etc. Penalties Suspension, cancellation of certification, recall of communication equipment, fines up to 500,000 MYR, and or up to five years imprisonment. Now that covers Malaysian's serum. Now on to Vietnam's VNTA. So for Vietnam Verification and Certification Center of Vietnam Telecommunication Authority, the Authority of Telecommunications is a ministry unit which performs the adversary and regulatory function over the telecommunication sectors in nationwide. Type approval and declaration of conformity are the two ways into Vietnam. Declaration of conformity is the process when the importer apply for product quality inspection registration during importation for clearance including airway bill, commercial invoice, type approval certificate, EMC, and safety report, then apply to VNTA. If you're going to the technical route, you will still need a declaration of conformity for clearance. So for regulated products, radio devices, telecommunication devices, short-range devices, and ITE exported to Vietnam or manufactured for sale in the Vietnam's domestic market must comply with Ministry of Information and Communications regulations. Before entering the Vietnam's market, importers and manufacturers must obtain type approval certificates for radio devices, telecom devices, SRD, and ITE. However, there are still ex exemptions for certain low power devices or devices grandfathered in form old circulars. Procedures to obtain a type approval certificate typically take four weeks with products tested locally or two weeks with test report recognized by MIC Vietnam under the MIA. The testing can be tested locally or in country. Up to two samples required. And the documentation needed will be technical specification, external photos, reports, and user menu. Local representative is required and three year validity for the certification. Family model grouping is not permitted. No family model rules. Each model needs to be tested and certified. The modification. Cosmetic change, such as color, is not considered as modification. Any change on the radio frequency characteristics warrants a new certification. For IT products, the ICT label is required. ICT is abbreviated name in English of Information and Communications Technology. The contents of ICT mark includes code, management code provided by the VNTA, name, the management information registered to VNTA. Surveillance in Vietnam. Approval authority will conduct inspections frequently but at random. If they found out the importer does not comply with the Vietnam regulation, they will destroy the non-compliant products or ask the importer to return the goods to the exporter. That covers Vietnam VNTA. Now we will go over New Zealand RSM. 
So last but not least, let's take a look at the Radio Spectrum Management RSM in New Zealand. Radio Spectrum Management is a regulatory body for wireless telecommunications, broadcasting, media, and internet. They require declaration of conformity, so the supplier must maintain all compliance records, including device description, test report, for each applicable standard and DOC, and it must be registered as an ACMA supplier. There are three types of risk level for regulated products in RSM. Level A1, low risk, garage door openers, baby monitors, wireless inbuilt devices, radio controlled toys, and other short range devices. Level A2, medium risk, cordless telephones. Level A3, high risk, citizen fan radios, emergency position indicating radio beacons, paging system, and mobile radios. There are also exemptions. Short range device radio transmitter installed in a vehicle at the time of manufacture. Military radio transmitter of the New Zealand Defense Force or cooperating country. So for the requirements for testing, the testing can be tested locally or in country. One or two samples needed. The documentation needed, clear photograph, block diagram, circuit diagram, promotional material, service manual, operating manual or user guide, list of modular pieces or accessories packed with the product, installation menu, and test report. Local representative is required in two to four weeks lead time. Family model grouping. Family model grouping is permitted in RSM. If products have the same electrical characteristics appeared on the same test report, then they can be grouped into one family. For permissive changes, this means that product hardware or software are modified in a way that affects or may affect conformity with the technical requirement. If new testing and reported are required, then the declaration will require revision. SDOC if for the end user device, although demonstration of compliance with radio aspect, though radio modules report can be used. For radio communications and EMC products where the level of conformity is 1, 2, or 3, you will need to use the RCM. But when the product is a radio transmitter in a class where the level of conformity is A1, A2, or A3, you will need to use the RNZ compliance mark, not the RCM. The RNZ is a New Zealand only radio label for radio products not harmonized with Australia. The requirement, legible and visible, at least 3 millimeters in height, permanent, E-labeling is allowed. Documentation that accompanies the product when it is supplied to the user sets out a method for displaying the compliance label. Package and documentation labeling is allowed. Required for all product risk categories. So in terms of surveillance, radio inspection audit on the following. Correct labeling, SDOC, product description that clearly identifies the product. Test report as evidence of compliance to the correct standard. Product variant statement if relevant. For offense, wrong label, unlabeled equipment, unauthorized use of label or symbols, unauthorized equipment usage or sell, unlicensed operation or possession of equipment, non-compliance with RSM, false statement. That covers some of the major Asia-Pacific countries. We hope this has shown the major differences as well as similarities in the certification procedures needed to get your equipment into these markets. If we have missed a country that you would like more detail for your own device, please feel free to ask. And if you have more questions about the detailed requirement for testing and certification for a specific device, please send us an email. This concludes our webinar of the Asia-Pacific Market Access, Certification, and Approvals for Electrical Equipment and Wireless Products. 
I hope this webinar was helpful for you in understanding the process of approval and certification, as well as what requirements are applicable to your products. Vista Compliance Lab specializes in certifications, approvals, and compliance testing for electrical and radio frequency devices. We are a 1725 accredited EMC and RF compliance test lab and a 1765 accredited product certification body. We are a telecommunications certification body in the US, Canada, EU, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Japan. And we provide certifications and approvals for all product types in countries all over the world. If you like to stay in touch with regulatory updates, follow us online. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions on the information presented today or any general inquiries, you can reach us anytime at info at vista-compliance.com. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day.